Welcome back. Have you heard the term IT? Most organisations have IT departments. Do you know what area of the business they look after? Well, they normally look after computers, printers, maybe the telephones as well. IT stands for Information Technology. ICT adds communication into the middle to make information and communication technology. Often the terms IT and ICT are interchangeable. There aren't many things that only apply to just one of these terms. Think back to the IT department again. What do all the things they look after have in common? The short answer is they all use digital information. So ICT covers most devices and computers that create, store and use digital information. Hold on, I've just used one bit of techno babble to explain another. What's digital information? Well, it's information that is stored digitally, normally requiring electricity to store or represent the information. Let's consider a light bulb. It has two states. It can either be off or on. Now, if we have two light bulbs, we can start to represent the sequence. Let's start by having both bulbs off, then just one of the bulbs on. Let's have the right one on. And just the left bulb on is the next step. The final sequence is both bulbs on. So with just two bulbs, we have four steps in the sequence. Using a zero to represent when the bulb is switched off and one when it is on, let's look again at the sequence. With both bulbs off, the sequence is zero, zero. With the right bulb on, the sequence is zero, one. Now with the left bulb on, it's one, zero. And finally, both bulbs on is one, one. I'd like you to pause the video now and write down what you think the sequence would be if we had three light bulbs. I'll start you off. The first in sequence, when all bulbs is off, is zero, zero, zero. And the last, when all bulbs are on, is one, one, one. Now pause the video while you complete the sequence. So here is the correct sequence for three lights. I've included the numerical value for each stage. Congratulations, you now have an understanding of binary. Binary is a numbering system that uses base two rather than the common base 10, which is used in the decimal numbering system. The base refers to the number of symbols used. So decimal uses 10 symbols, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. And binary only uses two symbols, 0 and 1. And now for a techie joke. There are 10 types of people in the world, those that understand binary and those that don't. If you're a bit lost on that, take a look at the table on the left. What's the binary for two? So now, pause the video again and complete the sequence for four lights. If you'd like a little hint, the first eight steps will be exactly the same as for the three light sequence. They'll just have an extra zero in front. Pause the video now while you jot down the sequence. So here's each stage of the four light sequence or each step when counting in binary with four digits. As I mentioned, the first eight steps are exactly the same. They just have an extra zero in front. And then the sequence is repeated again, this time the one in front. Now we can represent 16 numbers. We now know how computers can represent numbers. What about letters? Well, they are represented by numbers as well. For example, a popular way to do this is using a standard called ASCII, or the American Standard Code for Information Interchange. In this system, an uppercase A is represented by the number 65, a lowercase A by the number 97. Each number, letter and symbol, is assigned a numerical value. This number can then be converted into binary and stored in the computer. Any information stored by computers goes through a similar process. For example, to store a photo, each point of the photo will be represented by three numbers, which equate to the values for red, green and blue light. Now, each point's location and colour can be stored as a series of numbers. And once again, this is all translated and stored in binary. For the ECTL, you won't need to be able to count in binary. But know that information is translated into a series of ones and zeros, which can be stored electronically. Let's take a look at how this digital information is stored. 
First, let's consider magnetic fields. How do you think these are used to store digital information? Well, we can use the magnetic direction to represent our ones and zeros. A hard drive is an example of this. Here we have a drive that is probably out of a desktop computer. If we take the cover off this drive, we see a metal disc. There may be more than one of these within a drive. This is where the information is stored. The arm here moves across the disc, reading and writing the data. Information stored in this way is called persistent data. It can remain intact for many years without needing power. Next, we have electrical circuits. I've used this in the light bulb example. When electricity is flowing and the bulb is on, this represented a one. With the bulb off, no electricity, this represents a zero. An example in ICT systems that use this is the internal memory or RAM module. RAM stands for random access memory. It's used mainly as a working area for the computer to store information that it's using or needs quick access to. Most computers have one or more of these. Here we have those that may be found in a desktop computer, or these, which might be found in laptops. They have loads of circuits, and by combining them in exactly the same way we did with the light bulbs, they can store large amounts of information. But the downside here is that once the power is cut, they can't store the information anymore, and so anything that's being stored is lost. This type of storage is called volatile memory. The last type of storage system we're going to take a look at is referred to as PIT and LAND. And the idea was the type of system that might use this. CDs use this type of storage. If we were to look under the microscope at the surface of a CD or DVD, we'd see this. Do you notice the blobs that look like holes or indentations? These are the pits, and the area in between, which looks flat, is the land. Have you heard the phrase, burning a CD or DVD? Well, this refers to marking or burning the surface of the disc to create these pits and lands. Burning a CD or DVD normally refers to somebody copying some files, perhaps a movie or photos, onto a disc. The types of discs I'm referring to here are CDs, DVDs, and even Blu-ray discs. The main difference between these technologies is the type of laser that is used to read the discs. For example, a CD uses a red laser, but DVDs use a blue one which is finer. Therefore, you can store much more information on a DVD than on a CD. In this lecture, we have defined the term ICT as most devices or computer programs that create, store, or use digital information. We have then explored the term digital information, looking at the way information is translated into numbers, and these numbers are converted to binary for storage. Finally, we have looked at a few of the different storage systems, including magnetic fields, used in hard drives, and even floppy disks, if you're old enough to remember these. We looked at the electrical circuit method used in memory sticks and RAM, and finally the pit and land method used in CDs and DVDs. Thanks for watching, see you in the next video.